Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm on a TransPennine Express Class 802, or they're marketed as the Nova One. I'm on the East Coast Main Line, just left Dunbar, and I'm on my way to the newest railway station in Scotland, which is Reston. It opened on the 23rd of May 2022, which is one day before the Elizabeth Line. And I went to the Elizabeth Line on its opening day, so have a look at the video now. It's now the 7th of June. This is the earliest I've been able to make it up to this part of Scotland to come and see Scotland's newest station. So we're just traveling along. You may just be able to make out the sea. I know the camera's going a bit out of focus in the background. The big landmark, it's one of my favorite on the whole East Coast. Oh, hello, the Class 68 001. And some nuclear last trains and Class 68 007. So, talking of my favourite landmark, which is just coming up behind these trees, it will reveal itself any moment um, behind this next lot of trees. That rather large building there, which is dodging in and out of focus, might seem better as we go past. This is annoying, isn't it? The camera's not picking it up. But yeah, you can see there's a rather large building um, there. That is Torness Nuclear Power Station. It's a shame the camera's not focusing on the problem there but anyway, Tornest Nuclear Power Station is over there and I always enjoy passing it whenever I travel on the East Coast Main Line. It's just something I like looking out for because I do, I think nuclear power stations are fascinating and um, you know, they're one of my favourite things. It probably is supplying some of the electricity for the East Coast Main Line. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to continue the journey along the coach as it disappears even more behind in a similar way how it's been disappearing on screen. We're going to continue on to Reston. We're going to get out there and have a look around, but there's the there's the East Coast just over there. We'll shortly be arriving at Reston. Well, here I am, I'm at rest and we just watched the train go out and then the Lumo 803-001 went past. I can just see there's a bus pulling into the station, so we're going to have a little look around. The village is obviously served by buses, not just um, trains, because this village is very small, as you can see. It's only a village of 450 people, so to start off, I was like, well, how on earth did they manage to get a new station? Usually, when new stations open at a settlement where the railway passes through, it's, they're usually small towns, or there's been a couple of larger towns like Kenilworth and um, Ilkston, which um, had railway passing from fruit but didn't have a station. Thankfully, they now have. But here we're at a really small village. The nearest town is Eyemouth, which um, did once have, well, further up, a couple of miles up that way, there was a junction and a branch up to the coastal town of Eyemouth. Um, now, Reston did used to be a junction. The original station was, was down there. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a little look around this current station and then we'll go and um, have a look at the site, the old station. 
So this village would have um, been, is, is now in the Scottish borders. So I believe it used to be in the historical Scottish county of Berwickshire. Now, as I've been up in Scotland um, for work this week, I have a suitcase with me. So I'm kind of slightly restricted as to where I can go, but um, I could carry it up and down the steps, but I'm going to make use of the fact that the station is completely step free, which most modern railway stations are. I'll tell you one interesting thing about this station as we sort of look around. It's um, a ScotRail station, but no ScotRail trains stop here. Oh, now while we're here, so there's the platform there. You can see, I reckon this lift also goes down to the entrance, and then you can see there's a set of steps that way, and then the footbridge goes over. So if you would use this lift if you were going to any of the platforms. So what we'll do, we'll go up and over to the other side first. We'll have a good look around and then we'll go down and out. You can just see the station. You can see people are already using it. There's cars parked there and the bus came in. The bus seemed to arrive just after I did, so it must be time to meet the trains. It's a street level, platform level. Footbridge level. closing. We're going to the footbridge. So um, I'll just go up and then we'll see. So it's, it's quite an interesting um, design, this footbridge, because the bridge is sort of, um, it's not sort of footbridge square no. with right angles. The steps go at the angles, which we're about to see. Doors opening. So here we are. We are now on the footbridge. So what I was saying about the steps is if you have a look here, I could actually look, you can see glass so you can watch trains quite nicely from here see how the steps go down at an angle um oh, my suitcase is fairly safe there i'm not going all the way down but you see how you kind of come down here and then you've got your lift tower there and then that will go down to the station i reckon this is for if there was a lot of people it just sort of improves the flow of passengers if there was say a big crowd to sort of walk at not have to walk at right angle and then interestingly i have grab my suitcase the next lift there is at an angle that lift is straight but this lift is is sort of angled with so it's like in line with the first set of steps to go down so you get to here and the steps would go down see what let's have a look from this side of the bridge what's over that side so there's not a lot here there's not really much village on that side though they seem to have built a new path all along yeah i wonder where that goes just up there there was a site of the old railway station and curving off that way would have been the railway to st boswell's on the waverley route I like this um stone cladding this is real stone it's not like some plastic or something stone cladding um or yeah to cover the lift so let's go down to the platform yeah, it seems very pleasant here looking forward to having a little look around the village once we get out of the station lift. Nice if some interesting trains came through. An interesting thing I did notice was that oh, and then the lift doors come in here, go out there. The train that I came on, although it was Trans Pennine, I said about the electricity from Tornes Nuclear Power Station powering the East Coast Main Line, well it was running on diesel mode and I seem to remember hearing something that the Trans Pennine 802s do run on diesel mode on the East Coast Main. I'm not sure why. If you know, to level. comment and say why. But the Lumo that went through, they're only electric, they don't have a diesel engine. So that would definitely be running on electricity. Here we go, we're going out onto the platform. Doors closing. Oh, better get out for doors close. So, yeah, this is platform two. So this is, um, well, I would call it the down platform because it's down going away from London, although we're in Scotland. So. But I still think the East Coast Main Line it's, it sort of revolves around London, so it's down. This, this is the down platform. That's the up platform. So, um, I don't know if there's any more trains coming. I expect there will be some soon. I think I'll do. We'll walk down to the end of the platform, down this end, and then we can sort of see the station building behind us, and then we'll go and have a look around the village. I've got an hour here, so... It's, it's good to see a new station open, even though I said it's like um, the village is small. It must be really useful if you live in a small village, because not many villages, 450 people, with a railway running through them would get their station reopened. So they're quite lucky 
in that respect. The other next new station I think to appear on this line will be East Linton, which is further towards Edinburgh. As I pass through, I can see construction work has started there, so I suppose I'll have to, I will come back and visit that one now. I just want to see if this is actually a way out, or is it some sort of fire exit? Get to down here, it does look like it might be closed. Get to here, and um, let's just have a look. Yeah, there's, um, I'm not gonna go down there, but it's, I reckon it's a fire exit, and that'll take you out. That might be a public right away, I don't know, but we're, we won't have time to do that. But there, there we go, you get a view looking down at, towards the station and the footbridge. So as I said, no Scott Rail trains stop here. You've got mainly Transpennine trains and a couple of LNER trains stop there. Same is with Dunbar, that no Scott Rail trains stop there, although a few cross-country trains also stop at Dunbar. So it's a bit strange that you've got these, because most of the Scott Rail stations on the East Coast Main Line, east of Edinburgh, are served by the North Berwick trains, but the North Berwick line branches off before Dunbar, so that's why they've got no trains that stop there. So it's managed by Scott Rail, but served by other companies. There's only about two LNER trains that stop here, but if you have a look, it has got the um, information if you're traveling on an LNER train, where to stand for which carriages. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to leave the station and we'll go and have a look around the village. I'm back up on the footbridge now. We're now going to make our way down and out of the station and into the car park and then we'll see the village. So have a look from here. You can see where, I can just see a church, whether it's still in use. That's the village church. You'd be interested to see if there's any pubs or cafes in the village. And um, we'll just see what there is to see. Last time I did a similar video like this was in December when they opened a new railway station at Soham. Again, that was a, a town that had a railway passing through, but no railway station. So they opened the new station at Soham. That's a much larger town. It's 10,000 people. So um, we had a look around the town, but it's already talking of a much smaller place today. I've, I've explained why it serves the um, town of Alimuth. It's also got quite a large catchment area. So we're like now going all the way, we're not going to stop at the platform again, we're going right down to the ground, we'll have a look at the front of the station. So it's always, I'm really pleased to see another station open, it's always sort of exciting when a new station opens, I like to go and street see level. it. Street level. Street mm, level. Just see what there is really. And have a look around these villages that, or towns Doors opening. that haven't had a station all this time. So we come out here, oh, and it's uh, clad different, or got different type of stone. Well, that's interesting. So that building must be the lift motor room there. And then the stonework goes to this other, which reads tall, which looks like some sort of chimney, but isn't, it's just a lift shaft. So um, it doesn't look like there's a ticket office here, but there's a ticket machine. So this kind of area here is the main sort of um, front of the station. There's an empty bike rack. There's, that's funny, look, you've got, um, see these are disabled spaces, but they've actually, instead of painting it on, They've actually made the disabled sign in brick, which I think is cool. It almost looks like a Lego disabled symbol. Let you have a look around at the whole station there. And you've got various electric car charging. There's a smell of, um, you know, like bark mulch, because you can see there's various gardeners over there. They're planting trees, but look, it's also a hedge will grow up around there. And that noise you can hear, it sounds like they're driving fence posts into the ground somewhere so um you know it's kind of like it's in its early stages if we come in a year's time or so it'll probably all look a bit different so if they ever did want to build a ticket office maybe they would have one here but I somehow don't think they will um, what's that yeah next train is at 1553 to berwick on tweed that is my train so that's the transpennine it's funny really because it's not really transpennine at all transpennine have kind of grown quite a lot when they first started they were just, they used to use 158s and they literally did go like from Manchester to York and that. They trans, they went across the Pennines, but now they go all the way up to Scotland, which is, you can understand more like if you get the Scotland to Manchester Airport ones, they still, you know, trans Pennine, but um, they seem to operate all these other slightly more local services. But anyway, I'm not complaining, I'm just saying it seems a funny name for, they seem to have really expanded beyond trans Pennine. I don't know what's going to happen here. This it doesn't look like it's going to be part of the car park. It's always quite exciting when you come to new stations. They usually 
the station might be all ready to take passengers, but the rest of the area around it's not quite finished. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to walk up to where the old station used to be, which I believe is just up there. We'll have a look at the village on the way. So with the station lift towers in the background, you can see they're putting this fence up. They just that was the that machine there was what was ha the hammering we could hear. And that gentleman there in the high vis, he's pulling out the wire for the fence now. There's a, a good information board here, Reston Village. It has a really nice map of the village. It shows you where the station used to be. And there's actually some old pictures of the station. And it mentions station history. It says 2019 to 2024. Reston Railway Station hopefully reopens. Well, here we are in 2022. It has reopened. So there's various... Um, so when, you know, various ex explaining as to when the station did open. The line opened on the 18th of June 1846. Eventually the branch line over to Duns and St Boswells was added. The line to St Duns closed in 1951. I'm just reading this off here. I was going to learn it in my head but I can just read it. And then in 1964 in May unfortunately the station closed and then here we are it's back again. So what I'm going to do I'm tempted to go down there down this alleyway and find the river Eymouth. The rest of the village is that way there's also, I was just talking to a local gentleman, there's a shop and post office down there, but there's not actually any cafes or pubs in the village, so I'm going to explore now down this alleyway. This path was not made for suitcases, so what I'm going to do, I wouldn't normally do this, I'm going to just leave the suitcase there and we'll just walk quickly to the bridge to look at the eye water. So the eye water is, goes, flows out to sea at Eymouth, hence the name of the town. Let's just have a look down here. Well, this is pleasant. I wish I had longer, um, but I kind of can't really take my eyes off my suitcase. But it does look very nice here. That must be the A1 over there, that busy road. So it feels really sort of um, nice and out in the countryside. And I'm only, you know, three minutes walk away from the railway station. But this is the eye water. I'm going to head back now to the village and have a look around up there. That's the local parish church. It appears it is still in use as a church. I'm just now walking up the main street of the village. Well, there is only really one through street in this village. There's a road junction up here with a dead end road, which I expect goes to the old railway station. I think this building here might have once been a pub, looking at it. Look at that hanging out. It looks like that would have once supported a pub sign. I'm going to cross over and get through to church there. Or the Kirk, as I should say, since I'm in Scotland. So there are, the eye water's just down there between here and that field. We're going to go and find um, the old railway stations if there's anything left of it. So, as I mentioned, the new station is on a different site. Quite sensible, really, that they've recited the new railway station because um, this one's probably a bit kind of restricted and it would have also you know, meant moving houses or demolishing houses. So, with an empty field. Oh, look, look at this little dead end road here. It says Station Park and there's some poppies. So, I think if we walk up this little dead end road here, this is taking us to where the railway station used to be. So, it'll be interesting to see what we find. I can already see a building ahead of me, that one there, which I think might be possibly part of the old, it's either the old railway station or it's a ticket office of some kind maybe. We'll just have to see what we can see when we get here. It's now a network rail access point. So, um, what have we got? That might be the old station building. It's a still end road. Get to here. It says here. Oh yeah, look, Reston Old Station. So, that's the location. It's like a little network rail yard. There's a was possibly like a foreman's office for the goods yard there once, and then what is now a private house. That was either the station master's house, or maybe it was the old railway station. Somewhere just over there would have been the junction for the line to St Boswell's, and you may just be able to see over there the new railway station. I'm going to head back into the village now. I'm just making my way up now to the top of the slope where the road goes over the railway. There's the eye water down there in the valley. Oh, well, the old station would have been just down there, although we've already found you'd have accessed it from the other road, but you'd have got a better view from here. What I'm going to do is I am just going to park my suitcase there. We can have a look at the railway. So that way is looking towards Edinburgh, 
And if we go across here, we should not only be able to see the new station, but we should be looking directly down the site of the old. Yeah, so not really a lot left, no platforms or anything. You can see the new station in the distance. The line to St Boswell sort of gone off over there. So if we go to the end of this, um, off to the bridge, look across the field, you can just see a low embankment running across there. That's the old line to St Boswell's on the Waverley route, the section that hasn't yet reopened. That's reopened now as far as Tweed Bank. Hopefully one day it'll extend, be extended to Hoyk and eventually Carlisle, but we don't know. I'm now going to make my way back to the railway station and catch a train back down to London. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. And from the bridge overlooking the site of the old and the new railway station at Reston, goodbye.